constantly asked by our authors, how can I grow my audience and my author platform? The question has been the same for eons, but the methods have changed. And today we're gonna to talk about SEM and why if it's not part of your marketing strategy, it should be. start off with a little disclaimer that this topic may be a little advanced for some of you. So if you're not in a position where you're ready to take advantage of this information, join us back later and we'll be here for you. So I don't hear a lot of authors talking about SEM when they talk about brand building, but they should be. So SEM or paid search is search engine marketing. And as the name alludes, it just means that you are paying for advertising to show up on search engines such as Google or Bing. Quick pro tip here, so SEM is a broader search term than SEO. SEO refers specifically to organic search results, whereas SEM it talks about advertisements that you will place on search engines. So when people go online, such as Google or Bing, to look for different topics, they're serving up your ad if it's relevant and sending more qualified traffic to your website. The three types of search engine advertising are pay-per-click, pay-per-impression, or pay per sale. Uh, so pay per click is a nice way to get started because if no one clicks on your ad, then you won't be charged for it, which I'm sure will not happen to you, but maybe just a quick pro tip for someone you might know. So how does SEM work? In a nutshell, you'll be creating online ads and targeting keywords that are relevant to your book, genre, or author platform, depending on where you want to send traffic. So as people come to the internet and search these terms, they'll be served up your ads. So if you're unfamiliar with keywords, these are the terms or phrases that you are typing into search engines to find the information you're looking for. So I came across this the other day. It's a, a very real thing. Um, here's an example, we'll use clothes for lizards. That's <laughs> again, a, a very real thing. So uh, say I need a new outfit for my lizard. Maybe I'm gonna go to Google and search for hats for lizards or <laughs> Komodo Komodos <laughs> or lizard clothing. So if you are the stable genius who came up with this website for lizard clothing, then you'd wanna bid on terms like um, uh, custom clothes for lizards or clothing for pet lizards or amphibian outfits, etc. All right, so there are four main types of SEM keywords. So first up is broad match keywords. So these are variants of the key phrases or words you're targeting. So you wanna think here of um, singular or plural forms, synonyms of your target keywords, um, similar phrases that may be associated with that, or even misspellings of the words you're targeting. So going back to our super stellar example of lizard clothing, maybe you'd want to bid on lizard with an S to kind of broaden your reach there. Up next are phrase match keywords. So these are the exact phrases that you're searching for and anything that comes before or after. So going back to lizard clothes, so say I'm looking for hats for lizards. So if I was bidding on those terms, I may want to include um, custom hats for lizards or leather hats for lizards or hats for lizards with small heads. That all makes sense. Next up are exact match keywords. So these are gonna include things that are really similar to your target keywords that you're targeting, uh, but may include paraphrases or abbreviations or a reorder of the words. So another important term is like uh, terms that are being searched with the same search intent as your target phrase or terms. So what this may look like in the wild would be if I'm searching for hats for lizards, you know, another way to say that would be head coverings for pet lizards. So that's just another way to kind of play around with your target terms to broaden your reach. Last but not least are negative keywords. So these are keywords that you want to exclude from your search. So going back to our lizard clothing example, uh, so if you're bidding on clothes for lizards, you may want to exclude clothes made out of lizards or uh, lizard clothes patterns because you're trying to sell the clothes and not a pattern for people to make their own clothes for lizards because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> If you're not sure where to start with keywords, there are a ton of free tools online that allow you to put in the terms that you're looking into or that you're interested in targeting that will give you other phrases or keywords that people are looking up to find books that match that description. Some of these free tools include WordStream, Answer the Public, Google AdWords, Keyword In, and Solve. So how do you implement SEM into your marketing strategy? So as always, it starts with research. So when you're experimenting with SEM, there's a lot that can go into it, but in general, there are four steps to ensure that you have a successful SEM strategy. Step one, create your campaign. So choose your platform or platforms, and then in this step, you're gonna to wanna to create your high-level objectives and goals for the campaign. 
Also in this step, you'll be creating your bidding strategy and setting your daily budget, as well as deciding if you want to target specific locations and timing with your ads. Step two, pick your keywords. So we've talked about what keywords are. So this is the time where based on your research, you will select the keywords you want to use in your campaign. Step three is create your ads. So now that you know your goals, objectives, and keywords, you can begin to build the ads that will display on your chosen search engine. Last but not least, monitor and update as needed. So I know this has been a lot of information, but unfortunately, once you get everything set up, you can't, or at least shouldn't, set it and forget it. So you're gonna want to consistently be kind of checking in and looking at how your ads are performing to see if you need to make any changes. So using the feedback or lack thereof that you're getting from your ads, then maybe you can say, oh, maybe I should tweak my keywords or change up a headline or call to action. So you can always be making these refinements to make the best SEM campaign possible. In conclusion, there's a lot that goes into SEM. I know that this one was a little bit more maybe advanced or for those authors who are a little bit farther along in their author journey, but I hope that from this you can take away a general understanding of what SEM is and understand that the most important part of it is that it's serving up really relevant traffic and leads to go to your website. So people coming to the internet and searching in your keywords are being served up your ads at the moment that they're ready to buy or invest in a book, which is perfect. What did you think of this video? Was it helpful? Hurtful? Too much? Too little? Let us know in the comments below so we can stop guessing what you people want. While you're there, hit like, hit subscribe. We'll see you next time.